Hey, I'm Vishak from Cryptonomic, and I have with me my colleagues Mike and Itamar from Cryptonomic offices in Brooklyn. Um, 2021 has been a really exciting year for DeFi on Tezos. We've all seen how much it's grown. Um, there's a lot of exciting projects, but there's absolutely a need for a lending platform. And today we're going to show you a lending platform smart contract that we've worked on here at Cryptonomic. And uh, not only are we going to provide an overview of Tezos DeFi, but we're also going to demo the actual smart contract. So with that said, Mike, please take it away. Hey, guys. It makes a lot of sense, I think, to talk about where we are in Tezos DeFi by figuring out how we got here. And a lot of different stuff has gotten built over the more than a year, really, that uh, Tezos DeFi has been actively in use. and. The place I want to start, I think, is Wrapped XTZ. That's a project from uh, StakerDA, and it allowed people to create vaults in which they can lock their XTZ and, of course, delegate it so they can keep earning their delegation awards and mint against it uh, Wrapped XTZ tokens. And it would be minted on a one to one ratio. So that on its own isn't interesting. But shortly after that became available, we also got the launch of the first AMM on Tezos, which was Dexter. That's an automated market maker. And Dexter allowed swaps from XTZ to WXTZ. It also allowed swaps from uh, XTZ to other tokens like uh, TZBTC, which I believe was the first actual asset token to launch on Tezos. Uh, also ETHTZ, USDTZ, and some others. So Dexter, being the first AMM, was uh, open source, which was great. It also had centralized deployment. So what that meant was that uh, the Dexter team uh, deployed the AMM pairs themselves. Uh, at the time, that was perfectly fine. There was a relatively small number of tokens available on Tezos. Uh, it was also just FA 1.2 as a token standard, which is similar to ARC20, for those who don't know. And that was great for a while. It also allowed you to, of course, exchange your app XTZ for XTZ. So this way, it was possible for people to earn larger than normal rewards from their single XTZ balance, meaning that you could lock your XTZ in a wrapped XTZ vault, earn delegation rewards on that XTZ balance, then take the wrapped XTZ you mint, sell that on Dexter for more XTZ and delegate that. So you would be effectively earning more uh, in delegation rewards than you normally would. And uh, yeah, Dexter made that possible together with wrapped XTZ. Now, shortly after that, uh, or around the same time anyway, uh, there was another interesting DeFi project on Tesla's, and that was Calibri, specifically KUSD. KUSD is um, a CDP platform, uh, collateralized debt position mechanism. It allows you to, similarly to Ramp XTZ, lock an XTZ balance in a vault, of course, delegated, and then mint against it KUSD tokens, which are minted on a uh, two to one basis, meaning that if you have, let's say 10,000 USD worth of XTZ in your vault, you can mint 5,000 KUSD against it. And then you can use this KUSD in the uh, ecosystem in general, and specifically for DeFi, like on Dexter time. Uh, this is somewhat similar to a lending platform in a sense that allows you to leverage a position, in this case, XTC, but it's uh, limited because it only lets you lock XTC and only mint KUSD. So you can't uh, borrow or lend arbitrary pairs. The next development after that, uh, I think, was KeepuSwap. KeepuSwap was a significant improvement over Dexter for several reasons. One, it allowed FA2 swaps. Two, it started giving us a taste of what governance might look like. So KeepuSwap allowed token holders, liquidity token holders, 
to vote on the baker to whom the particular liquidity pool will be delegated. Uh, KeeperSwap, unlike Dexter also, allowed deployment of arbitrary pools, meaning that if you deployed a token and you wanted to have an exchange for that token, you could make a call to the KeeperSwap smart contract and you got yourself an exchange just like that. That was very, very cool. So I believe that most of the original KeeperSwap pools were actually deployed by the community. I think that the Keeper teams themselves deployed just a handful uh, for the usual suspects like TZBTC, USDTZ, KUSD, and so on. So that was cool. Uh, the very important thing, though, that it allowed is trading of FA2 tokens. And the reason it's important is because we also got the wrap protocol from Bender Labs, which allowed wrapping of arbitrary ERC20 tokens on Tezos. This was great because it's a gateway to very popular ERC20 tokens like Link, like Matic, many others. And this is also a decentralized platform. So what you can do is you can wrap your own tokens on Ethereum and transition them to Tezos. Now, because of this, it's a fairly expensive system to use given that Ethereum fees are what they are. However, uh, you could also just trade these tokens once they're available on KeeperSwap on their own because other people have already wrapped them. So Tezos DeFi suddenly became a very viable way to hold Ethereum-based token positions at a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost. And that's very cool. Also, around the same time, I think Tezx appeared. That's a project that we worked on, we contributed to. And that's a fully decentralized system to swap Ethereum tokens for Tezos tokens, specifically uh, ETH to ETHTZ and USDC to USDTZ. So it effectively offers a one-to-one -one swap of tokens between these two platforms with some allowance for the transaction fees. Uh, the system is decentralized, so no one has ability to, rather, the balances are never escrowed within the platform. The balances are always under the control of the participants, being in this case, the liquidity providers and the traders. The liquidity providers run bots, traders submit smart contract-based trade requests. Uh, these bots from the liquidity providers monitor the chain for these requests and then respond to them if uh, they're configured to do so. The fees are comparatively low. On this platform, it's a more cost-effective way of swapping tokens. And more recently, not only did we release an update for the UI, but uh, Tezx gained features for swapping Tezos-based contracts, uh, tokens, I'm sorry. So it is now possible to go from, let's say, ETHTZ to USDTZ, uh, provided that, of course, there's a liquidity provider willing to do this. Now, this is not these two, rather, Wrap and Tezx are not the only ways of uh, transitioning assets from Ethereum uh, or Bitcoin to Tezos. There's also Atomix. Atomix is a centralized platform, which means that it takes custody of your funds at some point. But it has been running successfully for quite some time, and it offers uh, a good collection of pairs. Then things sort of evolved as they are. And earlier this year, something big happened. Uh, we got Plenty. And Plenty started as a collection of farms. Now, this was made possible by the fact that Kipu uh, allowed the liquidity tokens to be transferable. What that means is that if you deposit liquidity into one of their pools, let's say you deposit some amount of XTZ and USDTZ into a pool, and because you will make returns from the transaction fees, in exchange for this deposit, you get some amount of liquidity tokens minted. And the way liquidity farming works is you take these liquidity tokens, you lock them in some other contract, and then they earn a return on their own. And what Plenty did for the first time on Tezos is um, allow you to earn rewards in terms of Plenty tokens on liquidity tokens from KeepSwap. Crazy, crazy APR. It was interesting 
because this was the first time we had a farm. Uh, although there were other projects that have since allowed farming. Uh, I believe Crunchy, well, of course, Crunchy has farms. Uh, Stake It Out also has farms. Uh, they have expanded their DeFi offering from Raptex DZ to include other tokens. And they also have a uh, Ethereum to Tesla's bridge. So there are different farming options, but Plenty is by far the largest one at the moment. Now, it seems like uh, when the farms became available that the, the reason why they wanted to deploy them and uh, have people earn rewards in terms of Plenty tokens is because a couple of months later, we got the Plenty Swap. Now, Plenty Swap was different from uh, both Keepo and Dexter in that instead of being a Tezos to token swap, it was a plenty to token swap. So you have to have a plenty token balance in order to swap to some other token. So Keepo Swap has a pool for, let's say, ETHTZ to XTZ. Plenty has a pool for ETHTZ, uh, I'm sorry, to plenty. Uh, there is no way to trade directly uh, XTZ balances on the plenty swap. For that matter, to get plenty, you might actually use Keepo Swap because there is a very large uh, plenty to XTZ pool there. Now, similar to Dexter, plenty deploys their pools centrally, but there are many, many pools available, uh, certainly for all the very popular tokens, uh, including a bunch of the wrap tokens, just like EpoSwap has. Uh, they, of course, have quite good liquidity because uh, since deploying the uh, plenty AMM, the farms have also expanded to include many more tokens. Uh, also, the uh, governance tokens for both Kalamint and uh, Hikatnonk and so on. Right. Uh, more recently than that, with the Granada upgrade, we got yet another AMM. Now, this AMM is different from all the previous ones because while all of them offer fees to the liquidity providers from the traders, very small fees. This one also collects delegation rewards from the network directly, meaning that the returns that a liquidity provider may generate from this particular pool are guaranteed by the network, as opposed to, let's say, in the case of Plenty, where you can take the liquidity tokens and farm them for a Plenty balance. And the Granada AMM works uh, specifically for XTZ to TZPTC. And the idea was to encourage people who hold uh, Bitcoin to transfer that liquidity to Tezos to participate, let's say, in DeFi or other platform dApps uh, like the NFT projects and so forth. On Tezos, uh, the process involves escrowing your Bitcoin balance with uh, some company like Bitcoin Swiss, and then they will mint a corresponding TCBTC uh, balance for that designated address on Tesla's. Also recently, the Calibri system of contracts uh, went fully decentralized. Some months ago, uh, we got the KDAO token released on the platform, which uh, allows people to submit and vote on proposals for how the Calibri platform functions. So for example, recently there was a proposal submitted and approved to increase the uh, lending cap. So that's, that's very exciting. We now have a fully decentralized financial platform on Tezos. Now, I might still be missing some DeFi things and it's not intentional. Uh, there's just a lot in that space on Tezos right now. But what we felt was missing was a general purpose lending platform, a way for you to leverage token balances, a way for you to borrow tokens if necessary. And we have built some smart contracts for that, that Itamar will walk you through. Hi. Uh, so as Mike said, I'm Itamar. Um, I'm gonna talk a bit about, first of all, what is a collateralized lending platform? And then um, a bit about doing that on Tezos. Uh, so we'll start, with, so the general idea is uh, very similar to Compound um, to try and see 
how a collateralized lending uh, based money market would look like on uh, Tezos for Tezos native assets in, um, in the Mickelson virtual machine, essentially. Um, I think the first thing that's important for understanding how this works is the idea of collateralized lending. Uh, the most basic example of this that's intuitive to people is a uh, mortgage. When you want to buy a house, you go to the bank, tell them uh, there's this house, it's worth a million dollars. I need a million dollars to buy it. Um, give me a loan and against this loan, I'll give you the deeds to the house so that if I don't pay you this loan, you have that as collateral and you can take my house if I don't pay you. Um, your interest on this loan. Uh, except here we're Tezos native, so instead of a house, you have uh, FA 1.2 and FA 2 tokens, as well as obviously XTZ. And yeah, you can collateralize, like you can borrow uh, funds against your collateral. What is this good for? Um, so there's a few sides to it. The first one, the first example is uh, the supply side of the market. So if you have some Tezos funds, uh, Tezos based funds that are just sitting there and you want to earn some yield on them, uh, you could come to the money market and supply those funds into the pool and earn the fees that borrowers pay to borrow those funds essentially. So if you're sitting on like a huge pile of X to Z, and for some reason you're not delegating it, um, you can supply it into the lending protocol, into the money market, and buyers will pay you interest to use some of it. Um, the other side of that is if you have, uh, if you want exposure to some type of asset, but you don't want to um, buy it necessarily, you could take your existing Tezos based funds. So say you have $1,000 worth of uh, XTZ and you want to play around with some plenty yield farming, for example. So you take you supply your XTZ as farm as um, to the money market as funds. And then you, tr you collateralize that and take a loan, take a loan against those funds, and then you get some amount of plenty, you can use those plenty to farm yields. Um, etc. And then once you're done, you can repay your loan and walk away with your original collateral XTZ. Um, and then those both sides are balanced by uh, liquidation of under collateralized loans, which brings us to what is an under collateralized loan? Um, as you borrow funds, you have to provide a collateral against it and the system requires some ratio between the amount you can borrow and the amount you've supplied as collateral to make sure that all positions in the protocol are solvent meaning um, essentially like the money has to be in the protocol or at least backed by something that's uh, equally valuable if the prices of your uh, underlying of your uh, collateral goes up and down or you withdraw funds from the protocol or you borrow more or you repay your borrow or any of those values kind of change, then your uh, ratio changes. And then depending on this ratio, the closer you are to the threshold, the more likely, uh, the, like the closer you are to getting liquidated. Um, so then you have to adjust your uh, risk appetite accordingly. Um, I'm going to walk you through some of the logs for the uh, demo that we have and kind of give a, a very basic usage example. Um, in typical cryptonomic fashion, obviously all this, uh, all the smart contracts and the JavaScript to interact with them will eventually be open source. Um, we will also open source the operation hashes and such once uh, this is put into a blog post and uh, made available to the public, I'm guessing. 
Um, so here in the beginning, we're minting uh, a couple types of underlying assets. Um, so this being Tezos native and everything, uh, we're obviously excited to use Tezos based assets. So in this example, we're going to work with FA2 and FA1.2 tokens. So this just starts with uh, me minting a balance for the underlying contracts just to have something to play with. And then we supply 100 FA1.2 tokens to the contract. Uh, supplying in this context means uh, we provide our underlying assets, so in this case, the FA1.2 contract into the uh, protocol, into the lending platform, and then uh, borrowers can uh, take out loans out of this pool and we get um, interest where the money we lend them is secured by their the collateral that those borrowers bring into the market. Uh, so we start by supplying 100 FA1.2 tokens and another 100 FA2 tokens. Um, after that, we choose to, uh, so we can see our current collateral is uh, no markets because we just started, but then we uh, collateralize both of the FA1.2 and FA2 balances. So then in the end, we have our FA1.2 and FA2 tokens uh, as markets as collateral. We then take out a uh, loan for 50 FA2 tokens where our collateral is the sum of our FA1.2 and FA2 balances we've provided, we've supplied. Um, so then, uh, you know, like in a fake example where all of the prices are one, we've supplied 200 and are now taking 50 against it. So that's um, the ratio is kind of like a quarter. Um, we then uh, try to repay some of this loan, so we would pay 10. So we're now down at, uh, we're down to 20% of our collateral being utilized for loans. Um, for uh, actual economics, um, like need to be, actual economics need to be uh, simulated for the exact parameters, but uh, for now it's just placeholder values. Uh, so then we repay like 10 out of our 50 FA2 tokens that we've loaned. So we transfer 10 tokens back into the protocol. Um, after that, we try to uh, redeem some of our FA2 to FA1.2 tokens, meaning uh, to take some token, to take back some tokens that we've uh, supplied to the lending pool. So we take out 20. So now our, um, what's it called? Like our uh, utilization is, uh, 40 out of 180. After that, we do the same with uh, another 20 FA2 tokens. So now it's, um, I guess, 40 out of 160, which brings us back down to 25, back up to 25%. Um, we then choose to, uh, so we see that we're currently collateralizing FA1.2 and FA2. We then choose to uh, exit, like uncollateralize FA1.2 our FA1.2 tokens, meaning um, choosing not to use our FA1.2 balance as collateral. So now we've gone down from uh, 160 and uh, 40 borrowed to 80, I guess, and uh, 40 borrowed. So we're like up at 50%, uh, what's called like LTV loan to value ratio. Um, and then we just confirm that the only collateralized market we have left is FA2. And that kind of runs us through a basic usage example. Um, I guess I'll pass it on to uh, Mike or Bashak if anyone want to add something. Yeah, so this is really exciting stuff. Uh, this, these contracts are general purpose. Uh, users can deploy lending and for any token pair. Uh, there is a means of lending XTZ directly as well. The collateralization ratio is configurable. And yeah, uh, this brings an exciting new facet to Tezos, Tezos DeFi. Awesome, uh, great stuff guys, uh, cool demo. And 
for everyone that's tuning in. There'll be more news and updates in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching our demo.